This chapter deals with the open economy macroeconomic model, the Mandel Fleming model, which is essentially an ISLM model that includes the interest rate parity. Again, this chapter is based on the book by Olivier Blanchard, Macroeconomics 8th edition. The point of departure is the goods market equilibrium of the open economy. So you can see the corresponding video, how it is uh, derived. But in a sense, we have that income is equal to consumption plus investment plus government consumption plus exports minus imports divided by the real exchange rate. So we have net exports here. And we assume in the following that the Marshall Lerner condition holds, which means that if there is a real depreciation, that net exports rise. So the price level is constant, inflation is uh, zero, so that the real interest rate is equal to the nominal interest rate, which implies that we assume that we are in the short run. And also the foreign price level P star is constant, and we normalize the foreign price level to equal the home price level, um, because uh, we, can, we can do this for, for what we have to show. It's, it's not really important whether there are price differences, and that implies that the nominal interest rate, and uh, the, 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 the real exchange rate, and the... Uh, nominal exchange rate are the same. Then we have uh, the overall IS curve, uh, where we already plug in the functional forms. Consumption depends on the disposable income positively. Investment depends positively on uh, income and negatively on the interest rate. And net exports depend uh, negatively on uh, home income because that raises imports, positively on foreign uh, income because that raises exports and negatively on the exchange rate because the Marshall Lerner condition holds and if there is an appreciation then net exports would go down. Then we have the second curve that we need and that's the LM curve and it does not change as compared to the closed economy. So uh, you can recall the video on the LM curve on the in the closed economy where money demand was a negative uh, function of the interest rate and uh, the central bank uh, sets the interest rate uh, basically and we assume now here that domestic money uh, is only in demand for domestic residents, so there is no demand, demand for domestic money from uh, the foreign country. Uh, the central bank sets the interest rate in a, in a way that it uh, keeps money supply equal to money demand for the interest rate that it desires to have, and overall, therefore, the LM curve or the monetary policy curve is um, given here uh, as where the interest rate is set to the interest rate target of the central bank I bar, so it's a horizontal line. And finally, we have the interest uh, rate parity that states that the nominal interest rate at home is equal to the nominal interest rate abroad multiplied by the expected change in the exchange rate over the coming year. And uh, if we assume that the expected exchange rate is constant, so we assume that ET plus 1 uh, is equal to E bar, then we can reformulate this and express today's exchange rate um, as a function of the interest rate in the two uh, currency areas and the expected uh, exchange rate, um, where we have that today's exchange rate is equal to the expected exchange rate multiplied by the ratio of 1 plus the domestic interest rate and 1 plus the foreign interest rate. This implies essentially that for a given expected exchange rate, if there is a higher domestic interest rate, we would have an appreciation of the currency. If there is, by contrast, a higher foreign exchange rate, we would have a depreciation of the home currency. We can depict the interest rate parity graphically. Now we have the interest rate on the vertical axis, the exchange rate on the horizontal axis, and we have an equilibrium point where basically expected exchange rate is equal, uh, or the current exchange rate is equal to the expected exchange rate, and that's where the domestic interest rate is equal to the foreign interest rate. Now, whenever the domestic interest rate is higher than the foreign interest rate, the exchange rate today would be higher than the expected exchange rate in the future, and we would um, expect a depreciation of the home currency over the coming year. And whenever the um, interest rate is lower domestically than the foreign exchange uh, interest rate, then the today's exchange rate would be lower than the expected exchange rate, and we would expect an appreciation um, over time. Now we have all the three ingredients that we need for the Mandel-Fleming model. We have the IS curve for the open economy, we have the LM curve for the open economy, which is essentially the same as for the closed economy, and we have the interest rate parity. Now we show these uh, 
three um, curves in two diagrams where we plot um, output or income on the horizontal axis and the interest rate on the vertical axis in the left diagram and in the right diagram the exchange rate on the horizontal axis and the interest rate on the vertical axis. So first we depict the IS curve here which is a downward sloping line in uh, the space of the interest rate and income which we see here because interest rate uh, comes in with a negative sign because it reduces um, uh, investment. So whenever the interest rate is high, uh, income would be low, and whenever the interest rate is low, income would be high, etc. So the S-curve is downward sloping here. Then we draw the LM curve, which is a horizontal line at the desired uh, interest rate that the central bank wants to set. So we have a horizontal LM curve at I0 bar. So that's just with a zero because it's the initial interest rate that the central bank wants to set. And later we will look at monetary policies and we will have another, so another interest rate, I1 perhaps, where the central bank changes the interest rate. And finally, we draw on the right-hand diagram the interest rate parity, or IP curve, if you will, um, as we said before. So for this uh, interest rate I0 bar, we would have an expected exchange rate EE bar. Um, and yeah, whenever the interest rate would be higher, then here the exchange rate would be higher than the expected exchange rate, and we would expect a depreciation over the uh, uh, next year. And whenever the interest rate is lower, we would have a, a lower exchange rate uh, than the expected rich exchange rate. And so we would expect an appreciation of the currency. Now, as compared to the closed economy, there are now two channels by which monetary policy can affect the economy. First of all, there is the effect that I've already mentioned before, that the interest rate has an impact on investment, and that changes, of course, the goods market equilibrium. But there is another effect and that's that is that the interest rate has an impact on the exchange rate and this has an impact on net exports. So the first one is the already familiar channel here. So if the interest rate increases, investment goes down, domestic demand goes down and therefore domestic income goes down. And the second is that if the interest rate increases, then uh, the exchange rate would increase and that would decrease net exports and that in turn would lead to a decrease in income. And the second line, of course, in order to be operative, it requires the Marshall Lerner condition. And the situation as we have it is depicted now on the next uh, slides and I will walk you through them. So first we start with the diagram that we already had before. We have the IS curve, the LM curve, the goods market equilibrium on, at a certain uh, income level. We have um, the interest rate parity and we have the interest rate fixed uh, here at I0 and the exchange rate, the expected exchange rate would be E bar. Uh, now the central bank raises the interest rate. So the LM curve shifts upwards to LM prime. The interest rate increases to I1 prime. And we have the standard effect, of course, that this increase reduces investment and therefore incomes uh, decrease. But there is also a second effect, and the second effect is that um, the higher interest rate now leads to an appreciation of the home currency, so the exchange rate is then higher than before. And this reduces net exports because the Marshall Learner condition holds, and both of these effects lead to a lower income level as compared to the initial situation. So in the end, we have a goods market equilibrium with a lower income level. Next, we look at the effects of expansionary fiscal policy. So in this case, governmental expenditures G increase, and this would increase uh, demand at home and increase uh, income, of course. So the IS curve would shift to the right. And uh, if the central bank keeps the interest rate constant, that would mean that uh, investment increases and consumption also increases. But net exports would decrease because there is an increase in home income, which raises ceteris paribus imports, but does not have an effect on exports. So this is shown graphically here. We again have the diagram on the left hand side, the uh, intersection between the IS curve and the LM curve at the goods market equilibrium and on the right hand side, the interest rate parity. And now the government uh, pursues expansionary fiscal policy. So we have a new equilibrium uh, with an IS curve that is shifted to the right. And we have a higher uh, income level Y prime at that point. The central bank keeps the interest rate uh, constant. So that means there is uh, more uh, investment. 
um, because uh, there is more uh, domestic income and that raises investment for a constant interest rate. But at the same time, we also see here that um, the interest rate uh, stays constant, so there is no effect on the exchange rate. But if there is no effect on the exchange rate and domestic incomes rise, that means that net exports decrease because imports rise while exports stay constant. And finally, we consider a policy mix where there is an expansionary fiscal policy and at the same time, the central bank wants to prevent the economy from overheating and does a contractionary policy, so it increases the interest rate. Now, why should this be the case? I mean, there are examples of uh, such policies in reality. For example, Germany, after the reunification, their demand was very high. Government expenditures were very high because the um, East uh, Mark was... Um, converted quite uh, favorably to um, the Deutsche Mark, basically, that was uh, made in the West. And that was uh, basically expansionary fiscal policy. The central bank uh, was afraid that the economy overheats and increased the interest rate. And of course, as we uh, will see, this kind of um, works against the expansionary fiscal policy. So the economy does not expand as much as it would have without the contractionary central bank policy. And in addition, there is then also an effect on the exchange rate. So there is not only an effect on uh, the interest rate and investment, but also on the exchange rate and therefore net exports. So how does this work graphically in the mandel Fleming model? Well, we again have the ISLM and goods market equilibrium on the left hand side with an old uh, income level Y. And on the right hand side, we have um, a diagram of the interest rate and the exchange rate here. And again, the uh, interest rate parity here, where for the given interest rate here, um, the exchange rate would be E and equal to the expected um, exchange rate. Now there is expansionary fiscal policy. So the government shifts the IS curve to the right. And if that was the only thing that happened, we would have a multiplier effect and so on, and incomes would rise to Y prime. However, now the central bank wants to prevent the economy from overheating, so it increases the interest rate. We shift from uh, I0 to a higher level of the interest rate, and the LM curve shifts from LM to LM prime. That means we have a higher interest rate um, and the uh, exchange rate therefore increases, which means that the home currency appreciates. That in turn, as I said before, leads to a decrease in investment, the first channel by which the interest rate operates, and at the same time a decrease in um, uh, uh, exports because the Marshall Learner condition holds and the exchange rate um, increased, so there was an appreciation. And both of these effects would reduce incomes again in the home country. So we would move here in this figure from Y bar to Y, uh, from Y prime to Y double prime. And that in turn implies that the central bank um, acted against this huge increase in incomes. So it um, kind of uh, prevented the economy from overheating too much uh, by increasing the interest rate.